Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Come, come Lord Jesus, Jesus come, come quickly. quickly. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the God of the Most High. The Lord God will make him a king as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. We light this candle to remind us of Mary, who was willing, first of all people, to let the light of the Lord shine through her and bring the Savior to the world. Because of her faithfulness and love, Jesus the Messiah was born. Let us pray. Father, you called Mary to be the mother of your son, so that the world could be saved and brought to new birth. Help us also bring the light of Christ to birth wherever there is darkness and despair, and to work for the coming of your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together, Hark, a herald voice is sounding.
Nathan, see now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel? saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My soul shall be away of the loving kindness of the Lord. With thy mouth will I ever be showing thy faithfulness from one generation to another. For I have said, loving kindness shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall tell salvation in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever, and set up thy throne from one generation to another. Thank you. 
to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, Your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> May the words of my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts always be acceptable, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The colic for this morning, this the fourth Sunday of Advent. Heavenly Father, who chose the Virgin Mary, full of grace, to be the mother of our Lord and Savior, 
Now fill us with your grace, that we in all things may embrace your will, and with her rejoice in your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The active words for us in this collect, the heart of our prayer this morning is, now fill us with your grace, that we may in all things embrace your gracious will and rejoice with her in your salvation. And so we have just prayed to be filled with God's grace. A wonderful thing it would be to be so filled. And what a wondrous thing it is to be so filled. It is nothing less than a, a divine blessing upon us. But sometimes our humanity may find it difficult to accept that blessing. So we, in fact, we have in some cases phrases that are less than wondrous words to express this idea. One of these phrases I find really uh, quite off color and, and uh, I, we don't like it. It's this one. There, but by the grace of God, go I. There, but by the grace of God, go I. I hear these words used almost exclusively in a situation where the speaker compares him or herself with some other person who is less fortunate, perhaps, or seem to be less fortunate than the speaker. A real down and outer. You know what I mean. Pick your own noun, your own adjective, adjective, whatever it is. But in this world, in which we are equally beloved by God, I find the phrase offensive. It's usually based on physical appearance without knowledge of the individual or of that person's circumstances. But I would like to and believe the need to acknowledge the truth at the heart of that phrase. By the grace of God, go I. By the grace of God, go I. In other words, I go by the grace of God. I go by the grace of God. Words we might say so that we are enabled to acknowledge the power and the effect of God's grace in our lives. And this is what Mary did. She acknowledged the power and the effect of God's grace when she agreed with Gabriel's proclamation that she would bear God a son. Her acknowledgement, let it be according to me, according to your word. Words from Mary, words from us. Let it be with me according to your word. These are the final words of Mary's encounter with the angel, her acceptance of the angel's message. But the encounter did not begin all that smoothly. And I turn to the classical artists now to provide some, some visual ideas of what might have happened. In the beginning, Mary was much perplexed, as we heard, by Gabriel's greeting and wondered what this might mean. In his painting of the Annunciation, Sandra Botticelli captures much of Mary's bewilderment. Gabriel is small, crouching, kneeling, with one arm outstretched and blessing down to the right. Mary is larger, standing with arms outstretched in self-protection, not, not in reputation or refusal, but just self-protection, just unsure of what the angel's greeting is. Gabriel pleads, do not be afraid, Mary. In his monochrome, almost, it's almost a, a, pencil, a pencil sketch of the Annunciation. Remember, Van Rijn portrays Mary's face as a human reaction to the angel's appearance. She turns away from the angel and towards the Arctic. Gabriel is large, majestic, very close to Mary, and just above her, he's just arrived. His wings are still spread, 
And one of them is over Mary to protect her, to lay her fears. Reminds me of the words, whoever abides in the shadow of the Almighty, he will shelter with his wings. And finally, Mary's words, here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. For these words, a painting by Leonardo da Vinci appeals to me. Gabriel is kneeling, and facing Mary, quite a distance from Mary, actually. One hand is stretched out hand in, in blessing. He's distant, showing respect for Mary. Mary is seated. Her face is calm. She shows no signs of distress or worry. She has one hand raised in acceptance, a gesture of acceptance of the angel's message. But if we could meet Mary in her own time and place, we would just see a young woman who would just look like all of the other young women of her age. We would not notice her. She would not look like some distant, impassive, shining figure with a halo just put out there for our adoration. Mary was a human being. We need to remember that human beings are all that God has to work with. All that God has to work with. And this is not just a statement of truth. It's a statement of hope and joy because it means that we are, and all humanity is, we are the material that God has to work with. I would reflect then to Mary, Mary's final words, Zedo's final words. Nothing will be impossible with God. With God. And we find this throughout the Bible. Abraham and Sarah, in spite of their great age, began a new people. Noah and his family preserved a future for humanity. Moses, in spite of his inability to speak clearly, led a people from bondage into freedom, from Egypt to the edge of the promised land. When God needed a prophet to announce that his son, the Messiah, would be coming into the world, a world that had to prepare for his coming, God chose an elderly woman and a man, Elizabeth and Zechariah, to bring that prophet to birth. And on in our own time, God's work continues through people. Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. to free God's people from oppression. But I believe that none of these people would claim to be extraordinary anyway, but yet God chose them. We might ask ourselves, what? I don't know. But it's something in the mystery of God that we call grace. When something needs to be done, God's people come forth with grace. And Herbert O'Driscoll, in his book, Praying to the Lord of Life, calls his gifts grace. And we see that Mary was full of grace. And we acknowledge that in that beautiful phrase that we hear from our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And this brings us to the heart of the colic, now fill us with your grace. Enter into our humanity, we ask, come among us. We ask to be filled with God's grace because we know that there are times in our lives when we may feel somewhat emptied of that grace. Times of fatigue, extreme tiredness, and all the world seems to be setting in on us. Through worry, worry. We worry about the pandemic. We worry about all kinds of things. But let us not lose sight of God's grace. And through loss, the loss of a loved one, a loss of health, a loss of a relationship, whatever. I say, feel empty, but I know that the nature of God is simply inexhaustible grace. 
With all that grace, God wants to enter humanity as God did through the person of Mary. Oh, to be sure for us, it would be a greatly diminished degree than with Mary, but this is what God wants to do through each and every one of us. Some words from Stephen Reynolds in his book, For All the Saints. All of God's grace imparted to our lives so that we might share in this one mystery, not all at once, but through the changes and chances of daily living. The life of grace leaves us puzzling as the message of the angel puzzled Mary. And scripture suggests that Mary herself did not understand the mystery that she had borne until her son was raised from the dead. Her whole life was a discipline in grace for the revelation of glory. And so may it be for all who by baptism and the Eucharist bear Christ in their lives. That's the end of that quote. I finish with our faith, these words. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. By the gift of the grace of God, let us stand together and declare our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom, from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Lord, and head of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you, and all peoples will summon you to their aid. Come, set us free and delay no more. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come, come soon. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut. You shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come, come soon. soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. 
come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, Lord our God. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come soon. Heavenly Father, you chose the Virgin Mary full of grace to be the mother of our Lord and Savior. Now fill us with your grace that we in all things may embrace your will and her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, O come, e come, Emmanuel. serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.